Angela Merkel is furious with the UK for not compromising in trade talks. Michel Barnier tries to divide the Brexit side and the European Union uses Joe Biden against Britain. Hello everyone and welcome to the second video of the day. On this channel, for the next month, I'm going to do a countdown because we only have 30 days left until the end of the Brexit transition period. Uh, so I do two videos a day. So one video will be dedicated to the Brexit update because the mainstream media aren't really reporting on this properly. So let's start because today is all about Angela Merkel and Germany. And they're kicking off because they're saying that they are impatient and frustrated over the lack of Brexit progress and they are purely blaming Britain and British government. Surprise? No. They're not even concerned about Michel Barnier's team messing up or von der Leyen not being able to manage the expectations from France and Ireland and other countries. Uh, she's purely blaming the UK. Uh, so this report in The Telegraph is now talking about how um, Merkel is saying that Ursula von der Leyen, the head of the European Commission, is getting increasingly more involved in these talks in a sign that uh, the negotiations were nearing their end game. I mean, that's not rocket science. We all know that. Uh, Merkel has said that the negotiations in London, uh, which have remained deadlocked over the critical issues of fisheries and, and level playing fields and everything else, and they're becoming very difficult and challenging. Now, I've been saying this for, for some time now, for the past few months, that they keep talking about fisheries, but their real concern, the real demand, is actually the level playing field and the fact that they want political alignment to be a thing in this potential trade deal. The issue for Angela Merkel is that she thinks that she's representing all the EU countries. So she's speaking on behalf of all of them. It's not all the EU countries, it's certain EU countries. Um, for example, France's Europe minister has warned that there would be no trade deal without sustainable and wide-ranging access to British waters. It said that our fishermen are no less important than theirs and they didn't have the right to vote in the referendum. I mean, okay, France, this is not about your fishermen. This issue is not fishermen. It's our territory, UK waters. It's about our sovereignty. Uh, that was the biggest thing about uh, this whole thing, and they don't really get it. Um, Ireland, on the other hand, their foreign minister has come out and said that, say that it was ridiculous that Britain was playing a blame game with the European Union after it refused to extend the transition period beyond the end of December. Uh, why are you still talking about extending the transition period, Ireland? It's, this is the biggest issue for Angela Merkel, because Merkel and the EU Commission are still focused on level playing field and political alignment. Uh, France are still moaning about fisheries and the fishermen, or fisher people, as the BBC would say. And Ireland, well, Ireland are still a few months late to the game. They're still obsessed with the extending the transition period. We have 30 days left, guys. Just get ready. Um, this is the whole problem with them. So now, Prime Minister Boris Johnson's spokesman has said that we have been clear that we won't change our negotiating position. George Eustace, the Environment Secretary, has also said that no deal Brexit could actually create new opportunities for British farmers because of the tariffs on EU imports. Uh, now, the problem is, that uh, on the one hand, the UK government are going out to keep signalling that we are ready for no deal, no deal is good, it will create opportunities. The EU have changed their tune, so they're now going soft on the one hand, saying that, don't worry everybody, there will definitely be a deal. But then they've said that the UK have to compromise. So the Times are reporting that Ursula von der Leyen is saying that Britain must play by our rules on the single market. I feel like I'm back in 2017 all over again. Why are we still talking about this? I thought we settled this, like the whole situation, but apparently not. Uh, so they're saying that um, Britain will remain bound over time by the European Union single market rules as the price of a tariff and quota free trade deal. Why? why? Why do we need this? I don't really understand, considering we are also signing other trade deals with other countries from Australia to Canada and Japan and South Korea. Uh, we won't be able to do that if we say yes to this demand. It makes absolutely no sense. Um, they're now saying that if our British friends want access to the single market without quotas and without tariffs, so total access to the single market, then it must be clear 
that all in the single market play uh, by the same rules. Well, that's true, but we don't want that. <laughs> we don't want that full access. That was the whole point of Brexit. One of the issues with being a member of the European Union was on regulations and your standards, because you keep standardizing everything, you keep centralizing every single thing. It makes absolutely no sense. Why do we want to be part of the single market? Uh, now, sources have said that progress has been made on the level playing field issue during the recent talks. So both sides are now saying, and the European Union sources are saying that, oh, actually there's been a lot of progress on level playing field. The EU still wants to take their share when it comes to the UK waters. They've gone, and that's according to Michael Gove, they're going back to the fisheries. This is exactly what I'm, this, they're playing games. It's just classic tactics. On the one hand, they rant about a level playing field, and then they go and uh, brief other journalists saying that, oh, actually, level playing field, so everything's fine. It's all about fisheries again. I'm not really sure what the plan is, but um, it might work. Boris Johnson might eventually cave in or not. You don't really know. So don't listen to anyone who says they know what Boris Johnson is going to do. It's all a lie. Uh, now, the Irish Prime Minister has also come out to say that he's very hopeful of this potential deal this week. So they are now saying in, over the next seven days to ten days, there will definitely be a deal. And there could be a deal. It could be a sellout. It could be some sort of skeleton version, a, you know, a very, very small deal that won't jeopardize our sovereignty, but that means we won't have full access to the single market, and I'm absolutely fine with it. But the European Union are sending Ireland, they're using Ireland as a puppet, as usual, to go out there, you know, good cup, bad cup. So Ireland will come out and say, oh, we're very hopeful, it's actually happening. On the other hand, Barnier and von der Leyen is coming out to say, oh, no, we can't do it, no, no deal. Macron is saying the same thing. And then they're using Angela Merkel in the middle, just complaining, saying, oh, I'm very frustrated, it's all the UK's fault. Well, you guys are complicating everything during these talks, it's not really the UK's problem. And so the, the Ireland is saying that it will require this trade deal, uh, political will to conclude the deal, uh, and there are options to conclude the deal. And so on balance, I will be hopeful that it can be done at the end of the week. So let's give them a deadline, Friday or Sunday. Uh, now, Joe Biden, uh, the European Union, he's now their favorite person in the world. The Electoral College hasn't even confirmed Joe Biden as the next president. Uh, and uh, they are already in talks with uh, the Biden team to get closer. Uh, they're now trying to, I've, I've said this a, a few days ago, how the EU's new strategy is to steal America as Britain's best friend. So then they, they want to be best friends because of Biden, uh, you know, if he becomes the new president, uh, to uh, make the UK more isolated from their perspective. It makes no sense, though, because why, why would that happen? The special relationship will continue despite having Biden. Regardless of having Biden or Trump, the general relationship will continue. There will be some issues, absolutely. Uh, but now the EU ambassadors have backed the European Council uh, president, Charles Michel's plan, to bring Mr. Biden over for an EU-US summit next year as part of an agenda to reset the big relationship. You know, special relationship between the EU and the US. Um, there's a lot of reports. For example, there's this headline in the Express saying that Boris Johnson is now forced to cave to the EU as Tories fear Joe Biden. So when you hear headlines like this, you would think, oh, that's it. This is the end of the world. But when you actually read the article itself, it's not any of that. So the issue is that they say Baroness Nicky Morgan. Yeah, Nicky Morgan is now a thing, apparently, again. It's 2018 all over again. She's warned earlier this month, it's not even then, like back, back in like November, that um, Mr. Johnson may need a deal with the EU soon to save the relationship with the US. So she said that I think the Prime Minister will not want the first conversation he has with Biden to be about Northern Ireland, Brexit and no deal. So that's Nicky Morgan's opinion. Then, uh, an expert on US politics, Dr. Nigel uh, Bold, just you know, one person has told The Express that Boris Johnson will have to make concessions to the EU in order to ensure that the UK keeps hope, hopes of the US trade deal. Um, again, opinion. None of this is coming from the EU, the UK, or the US government. Um, and, but the problem is you create these headlines and some people will just like read the headline and panic. Stop doing that. It's likely, as I've said before, that Boris could compromise, could sell out. Yes. You could also deliver no deal Brexit. Or the third option, 
because the EU won't give us a proper trade deal unless you compromise. We could get a skeleton version of a trade deal. There are still three options on the table. And uh, the issue is that there's this article in the, in the mail uh, talking about how Boris Johnson has caved in on human rights. Michel Barnier claims that the Prime Minister has agreed to keep Britain tied to the European human rights rules after Brexit. So what's happened is Michel Barnier is going to have a meeting with the MEPs uh, in Brussels and uh, he's told them this. That, you know, oh, guys, by the way, I know that Boris is caving in. And uh, then he's briefed the journalists, so they leaked it. Oh, yeah, we just heard that Barney has said that. And the problem is that the UK government is actually the UK's fault for even semi-compromising on this issue. Um, so the, the bullet points talk about how the PM had previously been warned that the UK would be kicked from the uh, joint law enforcement programs if it pulled out of the... European human rights rules. And uh, Barnier has now told, obviously, the MEPs that Boris has uh, given in to the EU demands, that they, we won't leave the Human Rights Act. And uh, so the, you know, the EU um, Com Convention on the Human Rights is ensure, uh, enshrined in the British law by Human Rights Act. Uh, so the Brexit has wanted to leave this. Uh, even uh, Theresa May was against it when she was Prime Minister and before that when she was Home Secretary. Considering Priti Patel wants to have full control and stop the left-wing you know, and activist lawyers from causing trouble with migrants, illegal migrants, uh, we have to do something about this. The issue is while Barnier is uh, creating all these like, rumours and division, the British government are not doing well either. Downing Street last night played down Barnier's claims to MEPs that Britain had changed its stance. A spokesperson has said, the UK remains committed to the ECHR. Uh, we have been clear on the time, on the, on the, at that time, and time and time again, that including uh, in our own UK Parliament, that we agree that cooperation with the EU should be based on our shared values of respect for fundamental rights and for the rule of law. The UK's approach to these issues in the context of law enforcement is based on precedent for EU third country agreements in this area. So what the UK is saying is that we're not remaining fully part of it. We want, you know, we want to have the relationship and cooperation, but as a, an EU third country uh, sort of uh, position. Uh, the UK government, Boris Johnson, Downing Street, their PR team is absolutely chaotic. They're not really explaining anything, uh, and we don't really know if they're going to compromise on something. What is it going to be on? If they're not, just explain exactly what the position is. What's the plan? But we will keep you guys posted. We have 30 days. The countdown has officially started. If you do believe in Britain, get your merchandise. The link is in the description. You've got the hoodies and the t-shirts and the coffee mugs and everything else you could find in the link. And uh, if you're a member of the channel, as usual, you get a special discount. Thanks again for watching. I'm MyOTC, and I'll see you guys in the next video.